And so it happened, Kurt wanted to work on his amps, and I've got stuff to work on too. I had to work on that preamp. See the other video I made with, with the preamp. We both got our preamps going. I'd like to do some upgrades to that preamp, but I'm really debating whether to bother or to start building a new preamp, which I've been fantasizing about for 20 years, building my own preamp. I also had a problem by two tigers. The uh, one tiger just needed a fuse. It sparked away in the closet somehow. I don't, there must have been a piece of wire in there. I didn't see. It's kind of the price you pay for not having a cover on your amps. Um, but this one, it didn't blow per se. It just started sounding bad all of a sudden. It, it's really strange because I've, uh, you know, obviously bad electrolytics is a common thing. But this happened actually as I was listening to it. Nothing had changed power-wise or turning it on or off. In fact, this amp usually stays on continuously for days and weeks and months. So those caps are used to having a charge on them. And just right while I was there listening to it, all of a sudden the music started. It didn't happen just like a bang. It happened uh, within like a three or four second transition. It just started getting this distortion, kind of a hummy distortion into it. And uh, I thought I'd blown an output or something the way it sounded, but none of the fuses blew. So I didn't think I was in trouble that way after I looked into it a little. Um, and it turned out, of course, that one of the caps had blown, had opened up, basically. And I wonder if that's oxide or what coming through that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, who knows? They're, the whole thing is old as the hills. So age-wise, you know, almost 50-year-old caps, that's not a big surprise. You see 4,000 MFD. 50 volts, how big they were back in the day. Um, now you can get these way small. Kurt picked these up a while ago and didn't use them. Uh, but these are more capacitance, more voltage, a smaller can. And nowadays, even this is kind of big for what you can get nowadays. So I'm also shopping for a bridge rectifier. That's the only thing that's holding me up from finishing this project. This is obviously too big to bother with. What I want to do is eliminate this PC board and all these old diodes. they got a real mismatched collection of diodes in here. And obviously I added these caps for auto foolery. So I'm going to eliminate this board and I'm going to get a bridge rectifier that's a one piece unit and uh, put a bus bar between the two caps. Something like that. Using a bus bar it's one of the best ways to lower distortion in, in a lot of amps. I'll talk more about that later when I do it. But uh, yeah, basically I'm going to abandon this PC board and uh, do it all point to point. This is what you want to see in a power amp. A bus bar between the grounds on the caps and all the other grounds more or less in the center of the bus bar. This is uh, your star ground idea. If you use a thin wire between these caps and you spread these apart, you'll get a noticeable change in the distortion. At least on a machine you'd see it. Well, getting back to some stale projects here. This has been all summer I've been without amps. No good reason. This amp's working. I fixed it, but I needed to get some couple caps in there. It's been a busy summer. So busy that I didn't bother putting my stereo back together. I fixed this earlier, but I held it up because I was waiting for some capacitors. I was also trying to get my preamp situated. That's another whole story. Fixed, but uh, I can't leave good enough alone. So these are the capacitors I bought from DigiK. Some ceramics. I bought them because they're small, and I needed small. Originally these went across the electrolytics. Uh, bigger copies of these, some film ones. Went across the electrolytics, and I didn't include them. I didn't have them handy. Didn't really have anything suitable. Now I'm going to put them on the PC board. Which means the ground's going to go through a thin wire. That's the drawback of doing it that way, but they're right on the board that way. They're small. They're 100 volt, which is twice of what they need to be. Hopefully they won't blow up. I've had uh, bad luck with ceramics when they've got power supply voltage across them and audio amps. But that's another long story. So this is my solution. It's going to go across the PC board. The rails are on the outside of the PC board. In the center, this will go to ground through a wire. It's already there. 
like I said, I'd like it to be a little thicker, but I'm not going to mess with it. Drill a bigger hole into the Z-board and all that. So this is just going to be tacked on top. So 200 volts of capacitor for 80 volt rails. Two 40 volt rails, making 80 volts. So I made my insulation just right, so it's going to fit exactly on the board pretty much. Hold it up against the board and adjust it until I get these right. I'm going to use a little bit of a flux rosin and on the board with this toothpick. I'm going to put little patches on the board. I found a place where they're pretty much clear where I can go across the board. I adjusted my jumpers on this with insulation. It's going to have to pass over conductors wherever I put it. About the clearest place is probably in here somewhere. And just tack it in. So before I tack it in I'm going to uh, put a little bit of rosin flux and not only this but on the board where it's going to go to with my toothpick. And I had these in the closet with the covers on all installed and ready to go. They were working. Weren't working well though. And after a while they, they died on me, both of them. And I found out that they'd both been oscillating in the closet. So I don't know if my um, D to A converter, my DAC, is going bad, putting out ultrasonics, or something else is going on. I took the amps back out here just to check them out, and they are okay. Nothing died. I also put this input jack on this one in, because I had done this one, and I had the other one laying in the bottom for this one. So I got that done. Freshen up those grounds, you know, and the, tighten them back up. And another final touch, yellow neon light bulb for dial light. I already put one in the other channel uh, several months ago. That's the only last one I had, so I had to buy some more. All Spectrum Electronics. That's where you can find such oddities. They used to have all the colors of neon, but they got fewer and fewer as time goes by. They used to get them from Russia or something. I haven't had any trouble with these lasting real short or anything. Some people say the colored ones last only a short time. But um, I've had pretty good luck with these ones from Wall Spectrum. I turned this one into an oscillator. Ouch. Ultrasonic oscillations. I think what I did is instead of landing that thing on ground, I think I landed it on the feedback loop. So I'm greatly attenuating the feedback, increasing the gain. So take it apart, look at it again, see where I can ground that thing, or maybe just put them on the caps like they're supposed to be. Well, that was an interesting idea, but I don't think I screwed it up. Um, this is a ground wire on point G, and I basically used this line to attach my caps to, and caps went from here and to here. So, that should have been okay. Maybe too much capacitance against the heat sinks? I don't know. Somehow it's not working, so I'm just going to uh, strip it out. I could have broken something else for all I know. So at this point I'm just going to remove what I added. Let's see if it still oscillates. And I think the feedback must be this trace. Not the center trace, which is ground. I removed those capacitors, but it didn't make any difference. I still have a problem. So I guess I'll go with a visual inspection, and then uh, I can't see anything obvious that broke. I'm going to have to do some basic troubleshooting. Get the Variac going, and no dim bulb tester, and oscillator, and scope. All that good stuff. Yeah, this tight fiddly wiring really gets on you when you get older, I guess. I kind of had everything well. Two the wires go here, one goes past to the pot. I think that's okay. There was a wire between here and here, which is actually broken. But mainly I lost this ground wire. That's probably why it was oscillating. So I gotta get that. I had to loosen these up all over again. It's just such a pain to loosen and tighten. That's the third time now. Oh well. Gotta just face it and get it done. So I gotta redo that all over again and get 
all those wires in there nice and grounded. Get those two washers soldered together again and then tighten those back down. You gotta loosen them where you never get the washers hot enough. So it's a pain in the butt. Yes, I confidently put my capacitors back in. And those weren't the problem, I don't think. So I turned it on. And nothing happened on the scope. That's probably a good sign. <laughs> it's not oscillating. Cool. Volume all the way open. All I heard is a little click from the a little bit of noise in the pot. So it is working. Very cool. My own worst enemy. Somehow this fuse got in, into the amp while I was testing. I found this fuse because uh, I found the fuse that should have been in the amp on the table here. You know, well, where the heck would I find a 3.1 amp fuse, which is odd fuses I had in here. So I checked the fuses and yeah, I had this shorter fuse. This is only a 2 amp fuse. And it's a little bit short. So it wasn't fitting in the fuse holder securely. So it's getting intermittent connection there. Uh, I think I got all the ghost chased out of this amp. I also had a wire break off the PC board, a ground wire. I'd kind of like to redo all that wiring, but in some cases the holes are just too small on the PC board without drilling to do what I'd like to do. To be revisited later, possibly. I just want to get it running like it was. The good old wires that have worked for 40 years. So now I've run them a couple days. And I hooked them up properly. I finally put used these uh, MDPs for the speakers. I've had them. I don't know why I didn't install them earlier. Uh, I had a hodgepodge of speaker wiring that kept connecting and disconnecting. And I got a real weird situation with grounds. So what I've done is I put a little ground between. I got a one ohm resistor in here. So I got like a ground between the amps so they don't float apart too much. The issue is I've got some remote speakers, that's what the resistors are for, and um, unfortunately I've only got three wires out to those remote speakers, you know, common ground, I really wish I hadn't done that, because that's all that's in that wire, but oh man, that's caused so much trouble down the, up and down the line, with different amps and stuff. These resistors just go to the remote speaker, these are too small, I just stuck them together because I couldn't find the mate to this one. There's another one just like this around here somewhere. And I just wanted to get it going. But that'll burn up if I really start cranking the amp. And I got a little platform installed for my preamp. A little place I can shove the preamp right in there. And that's going to be the next step.